Hi, and welcome to Better Code Today. My name's Tim Neal, and today I'm going to be talking about the singleton pattern. Now, the singleton pattern is one of the more straightforward design patterns in terms of its purpose. It's used when you want to ensure that only one instance of your class can be created throughout the lifetime of your application. This is usually to help with resource management. Perhaps your class writes for a file or accesses external hardware or any other external system where you're only allowed to make one connection at a time. It may also be that your class is unusually memory or processor hungry, although if that is the case it's probably worth looking at ways you could bring that down before resorting to a singleton. Now the singleton pattern isn't universally loved, there are downsides. You lose a lot of the benefits of object orientation. It isn't really possible to use polymorphism and you can't easily inherit from a singleton. Also it introduces global state. Allowing access to and potential modification of data from anywhere in your application can make for a bit of a maintenance nightmare. However, if used properly, I think the singleton can be an important part of your toolbox and well worth understanding. Now let's have a look at how to implement a singleton. The first thing we need to do is to prevent our singleton class from being instantiated through the normal mechanism. To do that, we need to explicitly create a private constructor for the class. As you're probably aware, the .NET framework will automatically create a public constructor for any classes that don't have a constructor defined. So to prevent that behavior, we need to explicitly create a private constructor. We don't need to have anything in it, it just needs to be there. The second thing we need to do is create a way for accessing the instance of our class. So that's going to take the form of a private static, sorry, a public static property. like so. And it's this property that will be used to access the instance. So the most obvious way to proceed from here would be to create a private static instance variable. And perhaps you would want to write code something like this. If the instance is null, then create a new singleton and return it. And at first glance, this would appear to satisfy the brief that you can only create one instance of this class. However, there is a problem, and that problem is multi threading. You can imagine that perhaps one thread would come into this property. Do the check instance equals null. Yes, it is. So let's create our instance. And while the instance is being created, a second thread could come in. Look at the same check. The instance still hasn't been created yet. So it's going to come in here and create a second singleton or third or fourth or however many. So this is not going to work in a multi threaded environment. Fortunately, there are ways we can overcome this. Again, going for the most obvious first, what we can do is create a lock. So we lock on our instance variable, like so. And now only one thread can be checking the state of the instance property and instantiating a new singleton at any one time. In fact, this is a little inefficient because what we can do is check the instance again outside the lock because if the instance is not null, then there's absolutely no reason to obtain the lock. So this is a standard pattern, uh, double check locking. You check the condition, you lock, you check the condition again, just in case the condition has changed while you are obtaining the lock, and then we perform our action. And this is a fairly standard implementation of the singleton pattern. It works in a number of different languages, However, in .NET, there are a few other ways of doing it that I'm going to have a look at next. One thing we can do is take advantage of static instantiation. In fact, what we can do is on our private static singleton, create it directly there. And what in fact will happen now is that the .NET framework will guarantee that the instance is created once and once only for the entire lifetime of the application. 
and that it will be created before some code attempts to access the instance property. So it will always be there when we need it. The downside to this is that there is no guarantee when this happens. It may be a millisecond before the instance property is accessed. It may be much earlier. And this might not be what you want if, it's, if there's any possibility that your instance would not be required. Obviously, it's much better that we don't even think about creating it. So what you can do to improve this slightly is create a static constructor. And that would look like this. Again, you don't need to have anything in it. But the mere presence of the static constructor will add a bit of code in the IL that will say not to instantiate any of the static fields until something actually accesses the code. So this is a little better. However, the downside would be it will create the static fields as soon as anything in this code is accessed. So if you had a second property, no matter how simple, then as soon as that, oops, I need to make it static. But as soon as that property is accessed, then the singleton would have been created. Also, it's just a little bit clever code. You can imagine you wrote this, you check it in, you forget about it for six months, you come back and think, there's a lot of constructors not doing anything. Let's remove some of those. You forget why you put it in in the first place. And suddenly your singleton isn't as lazy as you wanted it anymore. Talking of lazy, there is a much better way of doing it in .NET 4 using a class called lazy. And what we do here is simply it's a generic class. So lazy of type singleton is new lazy of type singleton. And what we have to do in the constructor is pass it in a Lambda expression for creating our singleton. Like so. Now all we need to do is change the instance to return the value, which will be the singleton. And we're done. So what will happen now is the code will access the instance property. The instance property will access the lazy object. And as soon as it accesses the value property, the code in the Lambda expression will be executed and a singleton will be returned. And the lazy class will handle all the thread locking and will ensure that only one instance of the singleton will be created. You don't need to do anything else. So for me, this is the simplest and best implementation of the singleton provided you have .NET 4. If you're working in an earlier version of .NET, any of the two previous thread safe implementations are absolutely fine, um, depending on what your requirements are. So that's all I've got for you in this video. If you've enjoyed it, please take the time to subscribe to our channel or you can follow us on Twitter at Better Code Today. If you have any thoughts or comments or things you'd like to see in the future videos, please let us know. Thanks for watching.